In this video, we're going to look at a crypto report by Pantera Capital, the year ahead. They're looking at the different sectors of crypto and where the biggest growth areas are. Plus, I'm going to take that as an opportunity to really give my overview of where the industry is and what parts I think are the biggest growth areas um, going forward for this year. Links in the description to each of the different sections. We're going to start off with the Pantera report, though, and how they see the industry in general. Before we get into the video, I am updating the crypto course very soon within the next couple of weeks with research reports and uh, lots of other videos with my normal updates. The price of the course is going up when I give that update as well. There's also an affiliate program starting for the course. If you want to find out more info about that, just DM me on Twitter or follow me on Twitter for updates relating that. So big changes in the crypto course. The price is going up when I make the next update, which is very, very soon. I want to use the Pantera report to really go through what I think are the biggest areas in the, you know, the industry for growth as well. This is a work in progress, but it is good enough to actually show us, you know, where the growth areas are and where the value is going to accrue, which I think is more important as an investor. Looking forward, I think it seems fairly evident that the historical arc of the world's financial rails will end up as blockchain based systems using smart contracts. Sounds exciting. I think this is going to be um, uh, more fractured than just everyone using one chain, right? I think there are solutions in the world for many different types of use cases, and there's not going to be one winner. There will be a few winners as usual in most industries. Despite lower prices, I think the space is clearly in a much better position than ever. We finally have scalability solutions that enable transactions with sub 10 cent transaction fees. By the way, Pantera is really focusing on Ethereum. Most of the research in the industry is ETH focused, but you know, there are competitors to Ethereum as well, right? But we'll take this as kind of an overview of where the levels are, because you can really relate this to every single chain, especially smart contract chains and kind of what the value accrual is. Uh, with a couple more upgrades to Ethereum and Layer 2's protocol extensions, it's not hard to see transaction fees down to about a penny. That's important because decentralized exchanges can't compete with centralized exchanges if fees are too high. I absolutely agree with this. And so one of, if well, the largest financial market in existence is the foreign exchange market. It has more trading volume than anything else. It is the largest market. It's so simple. You just take one currency and you switch it into another. That's it. So, you know, why is that important? Well, it's the largest single market on earth. If you want to exchange one fiat currency into another, you go to a bank, they're going to charge you what, like two, three percent, right? It's an absolute joke. If you use cards abroad, that's very expensive. So how does DeFi, you know, reduce that cost? Well, these days, if you use something like Wise, the way they get around it is essentially having different currencies um, in the countries that are just sitting there and then they just kind of let you trade between them um, from a top level. So they actually have all the currencies sitting in different bank accounts, right? In different, in different uh, currencies. Well, with crypto, essentially what happens is it's just instant, instant settlement between, you know, the two assets, right? And so as an investor, what you're looking at is, okay, so these DeFi protocols essentially take the fee for exchanging an asset from, let's say, 2% down to half a percent for Uniswap or for Curve Finance, you're looking around uh, four basis points. That's a massive difference, right, in the exchange market. So I don't think that everyone is going to have a Uniswap app on their phone where they're exchanging cryptos. That's not going to be the case. So one of the biggest opportunities or roadblocks to growth, I think, is this area here. And it's basically regulation. So we'll go through that in this video. But the way that I think crypto dis disrupts the industry is essentially having apps like Wise and SoFi and those other uh, applications basically abstracting away everything, you know, like Binance as well, but actually them using de decentralized finance instead of centralized and essentially giving you an option to trade one currency for another for let's say 10 basis points or you know 8 basis points instead of 50 basis points or 200 basis points that is how infrastructure and permissionless infrastructure can reduce costs and is actually a benefit to a lot of people now how do you play that as an investor right so there's a few different ways to play that the first one is 
do you want to invest in Uniswap as a token? That can happen. Essentially what you're investing in is a business that charges fees. Now those fees are going to get compressed over time. It's all right for maybe the next five, 10 years, right? Because you're going to have decent fees. But over time, the whole point of crypto is to essentially reduce down the actual trade and asset transfer essentially to free. And so whilst this can make some fees short term, the structure of actually reducing fees over time maybe doesn't make this a great investment versus something just like ETH, where all of the fees from layer two and the transactions, eventually you do have to pay gas for security. And so ETH maybe is just the play here because yes, all of the fees eventually funnel down to ETH or the other layer ones, if you're looking at Solana or you know Cardano. Um, but the real value for me over the long term is probably having a what I call like this collateral asset, which is ETH, right? That can grow larger than most other businesses, which you're just looking at a price to earnings ratio. So as an investor, I do still think that the layer one coin really is going to accrue more value over the long term. But there are certainly applications that can be profitable short term as well. The average person will have apps on their phone that give them access to DeFi where they'll be able to engage in financial transactions without banks, brokers with lower fees, global liquidity, the internet, but for finance. I uh, really fundamentally disagree with um, the outlook that we're going to have applications like Uniswap on our phone, like we do with WhatsApp or some other chat app, right? I don't think Uniswap is going to be an app on the phone that you download to make foreign exchange transactions. I don't think people are going to download Aave and say, I just can't believe I can lend out my you know, US dollar tether for 2%. I don't think that's how we're going to use things at all. Again, I think that the way that mass adoption occurs is actually regulation. And I think you know, the only real way to do this is essentially to have regulated custodians, which is going against what crypto is. I know that, but I think for most people, if they are to use this infrastructure and actually grow the user base from what now is like not many people to hundreds of millions, billions of people, I think most people essentially want an app on their phone where they know that the assets are held at a regulated custodian and that they can only get into it with face ID or biometrics. I think that these wallets are great for early adopters, but the vast majority of people are not going to use wallets. They just are clunky. They're ridiculous. And how can you keep all your money on a browser extension tab? It's just absurd at this point. So I know that Apple are working on end-to-end -end encryption for iCloud, and I'm sure they are setting up um, this type of thing where, you know, essentially your assets are in a wallet that can't be accessed apart from your biometrics, maybe that spend coins and you can take them out in and out whenever you want. I think that's probably the way it goes, whether that that's not going to be in the next five or 10 years. And so we're still extremely early. I think the infrastructure is pretty much done now. I think the opportunity for the industry to grow is essentially waiting for regulation. That actually means that centralized entities like Apple, Coinbase, BlackRock, and others like, you know, the fintech applications can actually offer us wallets that have some security um, and we don't have to keep seed phrases because seed phrases have to go by the wayside. What happens now is that with some of the new account abstraction wallets is that half of your seed phrase is kept in iCloud, the other half kept with some, you know, trusted other parties. So it's a really big mess. And again, the infrastructure is here. It works. We've seen it work through the bear market, but the opportunity to actually grow the industry now, I think, is regulation and offering easier products and services to people to actually get involved and use this stuff rather than wallets, which in the current time just are not the product that most people want to use. The article actually says this specifically as well. As you can see here, liquidity wise, to get more institutional capital using DeFi, there needs to be, and what I mean by this is Apple actually now give a savings account within Apple Wallet, right? So if you have the Apple credit card, you can actually save the benefits from that card with Goldman Sachs directly in Apple Wallet, right? And so it's an easy jump to say, if you're using Apple Wallet, maybe through Goldman Sachs, who are a regulated custodian or whoever that may be, there are opportunities there, but none of that is going to happen with crypto unless all of this is brought in regulated and FDIC insured or the insurance in your, in your country for the bank and for your, your assets there. And so that is the next step. And yet it, it's not crypto, it's not that decentralized vision, 
But if you want the industry to go, that, that's where it has to go, in my opinion. Whilst there are great solutions like Fireblocks, the major issue is that most, if not all of these solutions are not regulated custodians from an SEC standpoint. Regulation is the thing. A lot of people fear regulation. I think it is the next step to absolutely explode this industry in the real, real useful protocols. A lot of the garbage and the meme stuff, that is going to get destroyed, rightfully so. Good riddance to that. This stuff that's actually a useful, credible infrastructure will flourish with regulation. To prove my point a little bit that customer facing applications really draw in the most people, let's look at the, uh, or the blockchains with the most users. Right, so you have BNB chain, which has the most daily active users of any other chain, even Ethereum. So you know who's using this and why? Then you have Polygon even that has more daily active, active users than Ethereum. Now these are both cheap chains, and so you could suggest, well, cheaper transactions means you know more users doing more low value things, maybe NFTs, social gaming, right? But that's drawing in more users and that's important. Ethereum has fewer users, but each transaction is much more valuable. And so that also has value. Of course, you have Arbitrum and Optimism, which are growing users exponentially at the moment, which are essentially Ethereum as well. And then Polygon actually is basically Ethereum as well once they deploy all their ZK technology on layer two. And so why do BNB chain and Polygon have the most users? Well, this is actually one of the most used applications in crypto right now, which is not a joke, right? It's a game. And that's because, you know, people actually enjoy playing games. And, you know, for most people, downloading Aave and lending out some assets isn't like a massive use case that gets them coming back every day. But games are right. And so having use cases like this actually brings in people. What we can see here is, you know, uh, user active wallets, right? What are the most popular applications? We have pancake swap, which again, you think, well, this is an asset exchange and it's like bunny themed, which is ridiculous. It's absolutely absurd. But if you think about it as an investor, what you're seeing here is alien worlds, which is one of the most actively used applications within crypto. And it's a game. You also have hooked on BNB chain, which is social. You also have um, Benji bananas, which we just looked at, which is a game on Polygon games here marketplaces so as an investor maybe the games are uninvestable right those are just assets you can't invest in however you know the exchange of in-game assets is obviously going to be a big industry which is where, why you invest in exchanges and then eventually you invest in the layer one chain which would either be bnb polygon or ethereum so DeFi for me isn't a massive draw most people really don't care about that they actually just use the exchange as a byproduct of the other thing that they want to do and so DeFi as an infrastructure is great but also the other use cases like regulation that allows you know institutions that are good at what they do like goldman sachs and whoever to just give those products to people and then games why are they so successful because they're really they don't need um regulation as much and they can just kind of be sent out into the world and so that's why you're seeing games so popular and why blockchains that have games like bnb chain and polygon actually have these users but again as an investor i don't want to be invested in the games just a murky world, but investing in Polygon, BNB chain or Ethereum where these transactions settles is the thing that I'm looking for. Even at the current time in a bear market where usage is low, users are kind of at the lows, right? Ethereum is now a profitable network enterprise. And so we'll leave it to the regulators if they want to call this an equity token. I don't think they will. I think Ethereum is objectively a kind of gas, gas coin for a decentralized network. I don't think it can be regulated as a security, right? It just seems impossible at this point. We'll leave that to the regulators. But as an investor, what you're looking for is how, do they, how does the usage of this network actually benefit this token? The way that the usage benefits the token is that people eventually end up paying fees on the network and they pay for the security of those transactions. And the fees, a portion of them are paid as validator rewards if you stake ETH, so that's a yield. So you can now invest on a yield basis, fundamental value. And then some of the fees are used to pay are actually buyback tokens and reduce the supply. A reduction in supply generally supports the price over the long term. So even now, with without um, you know, massive DeFi use cases and many users, ETH is still somewhat deflationary, returning value to holders. So, like I said here, I think there's for ETH, there's competition 
ETH isn't the only blockchain or it seems to be the only one that people use now. Maybe there's going to be permission blockchains. There's going to be side chains that don't benefit ETH. But in general, I think open, open permissionless blockchains generally are going to have a massive use case. And even now during this bear market, ETH is actually washing its own face. And you can see by the use case, it is Uniswap. So what do people want to do on blockchains? They want to trade fungible tokens. They want to trade non-fungible tokens and assets, and they want to transfer different tokens around, including stable coins. And that's basically the use case for a open permissionless blockchain is to exchange and send assets around. And even now in the bear market, you know, ETH is doing that profitably. I will be making some further updates to this outlook on the crypto course update when it comes. It's going to be a few weeks. We'll be starting the affiliate program as well. Check my Twitter for updates on that if you want to get involved and are interested with that. Links in description as well. I'm James with Money ZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.